Just to even know ya I had the pleasure Oh Every single moment we laughed together uh, When I count up the memories one by one Wish I had more time with you around What is going on everyone and welcome back to Blanchard Film my name is Rodman Blanchard and I'm a photographer and filmmaker from Newark, New Jersey with most of my works being in weddings and portraits. Now, at the time of making this video, it's pretty cold out, it's January. And as you know, cold season is slow season, but slow season is grow season, bars. During slow season, it's an opportunity to try new things, develop new skills, and possibly implement those new skills in your workflow when things start to pick back up. So this time we shot some film, Tri-X 400 in a Canon A1 film camera with a 35 millimeter F2. In lower Manhattan, the financial district to be exact, I had my boy Matt Kelly on the camera capturing the BTS. And after it's all said and done, we'll break down the gear we used and the creative process behind creating this project.
Thank you for watching. It was actually pretty cool shooting film in Lower Manhattan. I used to work there a while back and on my commute to and from work, I always told myself one day I'd come back and shoot some type of project. So it was actually pretty satisfying to finally do some work down there, especially on film. With that being said, let's get into the breakdown. We're gonna talk about the gear I used first and the creative process behind some of the photos and just using the Canon A1. Okay, now for the video, I used a Canon C200 with a Sigma 24-70 2.8EF mount. The reason I went with the Sigma instead of the normal Canon I probably would have used is because this Sigma lens, this 24-70 Sigma lens has image stabilization. And when you're doing handheld documentary work, that stabilization goes a long way. As for the C200, I shot in RAW. Everything was shot completely in RAW. I then threw a Rec 709 LUT on top of that, and then I used another creative LUT on top of that to really drive home that cinematic movie image. The same type of RAW that you get from photography is the same type of RAW you get in this type of video when shooting RAW on the C200. You're able to change the white balance, the exposure, you're able to recover highlights, all that good stuff. But just imagine shooting 24 pictures every second or 24 frames per second. So you can imagine the files were pretty big. The scratch audio that you hear in the background, uh, cars driving by, horns honking, it was caught with the Rode NTG. As for the monitors, I used a small HD 702, seven inch monitor and the native monitor that comes with the C200. Now the seven inch monitor is no longer in production, but I use that monitor to keep a clean image so that I can see how the image would look, especially in post. And I use the native monitor for any exposure or focus things that I needed to focus on. Yeah. All this was caught by my boy, Michele Seville. Awesome photographer and now documentary shooter. Now for the camera that I shot all the images on, it was a Canon A1, which is a manual SLR film camera by Canon, which came out in this date over here. And it was caught on a 35 millimeter F2. The film used, mentioned previously in the video, was Tri-X 400. Tri-X 400 is my favorite black and white film. I like my black and whites, black and white. I'm not too fond of grays or gradients in between. I prefer my black and white photos punchy. I like my blacks to be really deep so that my subjects or my composition really stands out. And there's a lot of grays in the photo. I feel like it's a little distracting in black and white photos. Some people like it, personally I don't. And when it comes to black and white film, Tri-X has the deepest blacks and the most contrast. I shot all of my photos on aperture priority, which means I focused mainly on switching and changing my aperture and letting the camera do all the work and keeping all of the other values consistent. As for the ISO, it stayed the same throughout all of the shots because I shot on film and I shot at box speed, which was 400. My favorite thing about using this camera is actually taking the shot and then advancing the film. Super satisfying, ASMR. If I had to sum up this creative process into one word, it would be photojournalism. Photojournalism, imagine yourself as the journalist and you're capturing a story. You can't really go into the scene and change what's going on. You can't really make the scene look how you'd like for it to look. Your objective is really to put yourself in the right place at the right time to capture those moments in the best way possible. So that whoever's looking at those images can not just remember what was going on, but also remember how people felt. You have to be super observant so that you're not just capturing things that it's like obvious in front of you. You're also trying to be observant so that you can capture things that are underlying people's emotions, how they felt, what they're doing, how they're doing it. And so that way, when people look back at these images, especially when it comes to wedding photography, people can then revisit not just what was going on, but how they felt. You can tell a much more authentic story to what is going on. Now, street photography is like the ultimate form of photojournalism. There's so much going on around you. Everybody is just doing their own thing. And it's really up to you to try to capture those really cool little moments that perhaps somebody would have walked right by. Even furthermore, doing it on film really takes it up a notch. 
Even on priority mode, I still had to pay attention to my shutter to make sure it wasn't too low. There were times where I forgot to physically advance the film, so when I went to go take a shot, I couldn't. And what this does is that it slows down the process for me tremendously. I have to set my aperture. I'm paying attention to my shutter. I'm manually focusing. I have to physically advance the lever before I take my shot. And then on top of that, I only have 36 frames that I can take because it's film. So it makes me really selective about the shots that I'm taking. For me personally, shooting film has definitely improved my digital photography because now I'm not just spraying and praying. I'm not just shooting everywhere, hopefully getting that one shot. I'm actually taking my time to get that shot. Of course, if it's digital, I can take more shots to ensure that I've gotten the shot, but it's definitely slowed down my process. It's made me more observant. It helps me to pay attention to moments that's going on and really try to get the moment. So yeah, that's it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I definitely enjoyed creating this project. Please comment anything interesting that you know, especially about the cameras and the gear used and your creative process, especially about using film. Let me know if you know any tips or tricks that maybe we can use in the next video. As for the meantime, again, comment, like, subscribe, do all the things that help a YouTuber grow, and I'll see you in the next one.